Oh boy. So, I just finished off twice trying to play through Origins, how we became human. Those of you who suffered along with me, or watched me suffer and laughed. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, the game provided me with many, many hurdles to understanding and in to some extent enjoying. There were periods where I was definitely feeling like I was into it and enjoying it, but uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult. So among the hurdles, the rule book, the rule book is atrocious and there's no question about that. The mixed German English uh, in it, the living rules at least lack that. Um, it's very, very easy, at least for someone like me, to not get what the rules mean, what they're about, to find contradictions that maybe weren't really there even. Um, but yeah, it took a lot of effort to come to any kind of understanding what slavery uh, is meant, how it's meant to work. Looking at the facts and really synthesizing FAQ and really synthesizing uh, everything I had to try to come up with what possibly could have been meant by the rules as they were written. And I think I more or less got to it somewhere in the middle of this game. Um, like with a number of games, it's very easy for me to forget sort of key things that should just be there. So, for example, what caused me to end the game right at the, at the end? Um, why that card would act differently from every other type of card in the game, I don't know. But somehow, um, you know, I played it as though it was completely different from everything else. It's just very, very easy for me to become, you know, with, with a game with this many levers to play with that are this, um, I'm going to say counterintuitive. I mean, nothing in the game really directly seems to link to what I'm trying to do in a very clear and easy way. It seems very abstract uh, what I'm playing with. Maybe there's some hidden theories in here that if I read through all these notes would somehow make it make more sense, but I don't think so from what I've seen of them. These seem like historical notes, many of which are things that I actually do know about. Um, so the actual, I'm, I'm looking through the end notes to see if there's any real discussion of the design because the design is so weird and I feel like there should be some sort of link between that design and what's coming about in the game and that's just missing for me and, uh, that, and knowing that might help because it is not at all intuitive to my way of thinking um, why you know you some particular balance gives you victory <laughs> or the ability to keep proceeding, but it doesn't otherwise. And that's what the game really is. It's a balancing act, one with a lot of complicated factors. It's not something where, say, you just want to go out and get as much population as you can, like you would in a game like Civilization, which I think is far, far more accessible. And, you know, short rules, very simple mechanisms, Perhaps a longer game, I'm not sure. This, this seemed to take quite a while, but that may be because I was blundering around uh, with, with trying to figure out how to get. And th this is something I had with High Frontier, too. Uh, how to get. I knew what I wanted. I kind of had an idea what I had to do or what things would look like, but getting to those how those things would look was very hard. It's very easy in this game 
for another player to step in and stomp on whatever you're trying to do. It's also very easy for me to get to become opportunist. I usually am an opportunist in games and I search for opportunities. And in this one there's a lot of face up cards. And if I can do something that looks like it's getting me in the right direction, then I try to do that with the cards at hand rather than especially as I got more familiar with the game, rather than reaching into that draw pile and pulling a card that could end up being a public card that doesn't necessarily help me at all. Now, if I'm in the position to take advantage of any public card that comes up, like if I have more uh, uh, producing elders than anyone else, or if nobody has any producing elders and I'm drawing the card, whether I have any or not, then it becomes more of a temptation to do so. I'm going to give this another try at some point. I don't know whether or not I'll video it. Uh, you know, I think I've embarrassed myself enough with two, two attempts at it already. Uh, but maybe, you know, sometime in the far distant future, <laughs> I may uh, understand the game enough and, and, and the ideas behind it to feel that I can take another tackle at it with video. It's definitely going on the shelf for some time now, though. It's not something I want to face right away. It's not something I want to face for quite some time. Uh, it was very discouraging and very frustrating to play something I didn't grasp to this degree. Uh, I'm used to about halfway through a game, no matter how twisted and complex and convoluted the game is, having some feeling of the kinds of things I have to do. I may not be good at the game. Uh, it may be like, you know, pandemic, I started to see how I can kind of, you know, stack one action on the other. Here, this just was not, you know, striking me. And I'm not sure why. It doesn't seem like the actions are terribly complicated. It seems like there was some kind of, maybe a mindset, a uh, mind block, put in by the rule book, by the little pictograms, by things like that. Component-wise, it's fairly, uh, you know, fairly decent, actually. The board is serviceable, nothing, you know, nothing beautiful. It's got a bunch of charts. These were hard for me to read, partially because we've got these big player aid mats and everything, and there's a lot of distance between you and these. I almost wish that these charts could have been somewhere else, but I don't know where, and there's a big footprint already with five player charts with the uh, sequence of play with the, the turn with the rule book itself, where, you know, for what is kind of, you know, a, a kind of complex euro, um, feels like a lot of table space got taken up by it. <sighs> In a lot of ways, I'm kind of thankful that I didn't have to go through the trouble of the third to fourth age uh, conversion because the second to third was so painful for me. Now, maybe those that extra deck makes things easier uh, for, the tra for, for that movement, but I doubt it. I, I would suspect that I would be suffering even longer and, and worse for it. Um, it's a pity because... It is a theme that I like a lot, and I generally do tend to like games with a lot of different things in them, a lot, a lot of different pieces. I, I like the fact that it has, you know, this um, this random element in it that most of Eklund's games do. I feel that adds playability. It adds. Uh, you know, I mean, when you set up civilization, especially with the original rules, which I think is a beautiful and, and clean game, but it almost always follows the same pattern <laughs> playing it. So this would, I think, have a lot more flexibility there, but really grasping the rules and how they, they all interlock and work for something without all that many rules, and then grasping how to make those rules work for what you, you're trying to do. Coming up with anything like a strategy in it. I mean, beyond the, oh wow, I want to get my, uh, my innovation up. 
and oh wow, I want to stop anyone else from getting their innovation. No. I may be a little too violent uh, in nature for this game. I may see, oh, that guy is struggling his way out. Kick him down now. <laughs> uh, that, that may be one of the problems with it. But clearly also, I had a lot of difficulty just grasping it enough to be able to even play in my own little world in a safe way. It might make the most sense to play in a, a much smaller game than I did. It's maybe too much to tackle with so many different players at once. Same factor with High Frontier. The difference is in High Frontier, after my first game, I wasn't thrilled with it. I felt like it was too simple. I felt like there was a lot of complexity in all these little pieces, but that the game itself was just... There wasn't that much you were going for. And with the expansion, I began to see, okay, there are more possibilities. It's not this straight line with very few sort of winning combinations. This one seems to be much, much less straightforward. But maybe I need that simpler game to mock before I, I go on with it. I want to give it another try. I, I really do want to like this game. But right now, I'm just really frustrated. And, uh, you know, It's not what I was hoping for at the moment. At the moment, I was, you know, when I picked this up, I haven't been feeling terribly well. And I guess I was hoping for something significantly lighter. Uh, I'm kind of trying to stay away from playing the SPQR ones. Not because, I mean, they're simple for me at this point. Uh, but I just don't want to be leaning over moving the pieces then. So I've been kind of aiming more for, uh, you know, more Euro-ish games for the past couple weeks because I have you know, I might pull out something I know I clipped Vinci recently. Uh, got some others that I could do. <sighs> I don't know what. But anyway, wish I could tell you more about this one than I have. Uh, what I can say is, if you don't want something that's fairly complex and interlocking and, 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 and hard to grasp, and you don't want, if you're really, really disturbed by a, a terrible rule set, um, I would hold off on, on this. I would, you know, for one thing, if you can find somebody who has it and play it with them, that might help a lot because then they can kind of put you through the steps without having, having to try to learn them all on your own, especially in a solo game. Uh, I usually get more insight into a solo game than when I'm playing with other people. But with this, I feel like I really wish that I could sit down with Phil and play this, because he made learning American Megafauna so much easier. And you know, I, I, I just get the feeling that each of these games is so alien to me in its thought processes. Sort of the mega uh, Euro style. This ultra complex type of Euro. And that kind of makes me scared because uh, I, I want to get the mocker. But maybe, maybe that's too much for me too. Um, you know, there's just so many so much decision making, so many different things that you have to balance together to get something to work. Uh, and it's really a challenge for me in a way that most war games are, unless they have boats in them. If they have, boat, if they have too many boats, they, they, I face the same kind of issue. So like a big Pacific war game, man, I look at it and I say, I don't know what to do. That's kind of how I felt here. And at points I thought I knew what to do and got kind of into a pattern. But those patterns turned into these little cycles that I couldn't get out of. Which may be very, very true to kind of the history of the world. At least in the earlier periods before you get into deck three. All right, our deck four. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up, whatever my words are worth here. You know, take what you can from them if you bothered listening this far. Hopefully, I'll have uh, something I can speak a little bit clearer about coming up at some point. <laughs>